All right, let's take a look at how to do these next examples. Problem number four, you already know how to solve quadratic equations, so pause the video here, see what you can do. Go ahead. Yes, you are allowed to factor our quadratic formula. So here we have u squared minus 3u minus 4 equals 0. Factors, or you can use quadratic formula, will give you u equals 4 or u equals negative 1. What about number 5? Pause the video and see how you would do number 5. Many of you will say, well, wait a minute, this is not a quadratic equation. So you are correct, it is not a quadratic equation, but See if you see any parallels between this problem and this problem. Good for you. Some of you saw that we can say u equals x plus 3 to the power 1 third, because then you have over here u squared minus 3u minus 4. Why? So because if you look at this x plus 3 to the power 2 thirds, 2 thirds is the same as 1 third, and then parentheses squared. And so you can see that if you square u, you will actually end up with x plus 3 to the power 2 thirds. And so now you have u squared minus 3u minus 4. So we have u minus 4, u plus 1, just like on the left-hand side. Except now, once you have your u, you have to go back and replace it with the x plus 3 to power 1 third. So now you actually have a power equation, x plus 3 to power 1 third equals 4, which is really cube root. How do you undo cube root? Good, cube both sides. And so cubing both sides will give us x plus 3 equals 64, and we'll get x equals 61, or x equals negative 4. There is one more thing you need to do, and which is going back and replacing the x equals 61 into the original equation. So 61 plus 3 is 64. Cube root 64 is 4. 4 squared is 16 minus 3 times 64 cube root, which is 4, so 12, and minus 4. And you will see that adds up to 0. So please check both solutions to make sure they work. So this is a disguised quadratic equation. So even though it didn't look like a quadratic, it actually behaved like a quadratic. You just had to figure out which quadratic equation it mimicked. All right, let's do one more example. Why don't you try this one on your own? So 3x to the fourth plus 14x squared plus 8 equals 0. See what you can do. Go ahead, pause the video, see what you can do. Again, it's not exactly a quadratic equation. But see if you can figure out what disguised quadratic equation it can be. Did you try it? Go ahead. All right, assuming you've come back, let's see what we got. We have x to the fourth and x squared. And we can see that x to the fourth is x squared squared. So if we make u equals x squared, then you will have 3u squared plus 14u plus 8 equals 0, which you can factor or use quadratic formula for. So you have u equals negative 4 or u equals negative 2 thirds. Don't forget, our u is x squared. So x squared is negative 4 or negative 2 thirds. And so when you undo squares, which means you'll have to do plus or minus square root because you're getting rid of an even root. So you will have four solutions, 2i, negative 2i, and square root 6 thirds i. You can also write that as square root 2 over square root 3i. But if you rationalize the denominator, multiplying numerator denominator by square root 3, then you will have that. So don't forget, you have to go back and check your answers. So please go into the original equation. Check that all of these work. So you should never get equation wrong, because you can always plug it back into the original equation and check that you have the right answer. I will leave that to you. All right, in this next one, you're asked to find points of intersection for the linear graph and the parabola. How do you do that? To find the intersection of the parabolic function and linear function, you want the y-coordinates equal. 
So if you want the y coordinates equal, you have to set them to each other. So you have 1 half x plus 2 equals the negative 1 third x squared plus 3x plus 4. And then if you solve, bring everything to the same side, get rid of the denominator by multiplying everything by 6. And that will give you the quadratic equation 2x squared minus 15x minus 12 equals 0. And so we'll go ahead and solve that quadratic equation and then verify that this is what you get for your x coordinates. To get approximate answers of what these are, you'll have to use your calculators. Because when you do 15 plus or minus square root 321 over 4, those are exact coordinates. So if you want the exact coordinates, here they are. If you plug it back into the y coordinate, doesn't matter which y coordinate because they intersect, which means they have the same y coordinate. So I would put it back into the linear equation. So our y coordinates for each of those are 31 eighths plus square root 31 over 8, which is 6.11 approximately, just so you have a sense of where it is. And for the minus solution, you have 1.635. So if you were to graph that, we already know how to graph parabola. So here's our downward facing parabola and a straight line, and they intersect at these two coordinates. So there are many applications of being able to solve quadratic equations. To solve the quadratic inequality, ax squared plus bx plus c greater than 0, remember we have two methods at our disposal for solving any inequality in one variable. You can solve the equation equal to 0, use those critical points, plot them on a number line, and do test points, and then determine which is your solution. In the graphical method, you would plot the graph of the parabola wherever the parabola hits the x-axis. So the x-intercepts, those are points where it's exactly equal to 0 for the y-coordinate. And then in order to look for where the y-coordinate is greater than 0, which means where is the graph of the parabola above the x-axis. If you wanted to know where the inequality is less than 0, that means you're looking for where the parabola is y-coordinate less than 0. Or in other words, where is the parabola graph underneath the x-axis. So you're always looking for, for what x-coordinate something happens on the parabola. All right, let's solve this inequality. We have x squared minus x greater than 6. We saw that if you solve the equation where you have equal to 6, so we have x squared minus x minus 6 greater than 0. So if you factor and you want to know where the product is greater than 0, solve the equation first. So change the inequality to an equal to sign, and then look what happens. We have x equals 3 and x equals negative 2 which are making it exactly equal. And so once you plot the 3 and negative 2, negative 2 and 3 cannot be included because you want greater than 0. And so because you want greater than 0, you cannot include 3 and negative 2. So now that you have that, we do test points. So pick a point below negative 2, between negative 2 and 3, and beyond 3, so greater than 3. So we'll pick negative 3, 0, and 4. Once you pick that, plug it back into the original x squared minus x greater than 6. So if you do that, you'll get 12. 12 is greater than 6 is a true statement. That means all points less than negative 2 are your solutions. What about 0? 0 will give you 0 squared minus 0, which is 0. 0 greater than 6 is a false statement. So no point between negative 2 and 3 satisfies your inequality. What about points above 3? So let's say 4. When you plug it in, you get 12. 12 is greater than 6. So that means beyond 3 also is your solution set. So our solution set is all points negative infinity to negative 2 and 3 to infinity. Another way to solve this would be if you looked at y equals x minus 3 times x plus 2 greater than 0. You know it's a parabola. So negative 2 and 3 are points where you have exactly equal to 0. So those points are not included. And then the 
y coordinate you want greater than 0. So that's why it's the part that is above the x-axis. So our x-coordinates for which y coordinate is positive are negative infinity to negative 2 and 3 to infinity just like before. So you can use any method you want to solve quadratic inequalities. Let's do an application. The price or demand function is given to you as 100 minus 1 over 25 x dollars per unit. x is the number of units sold. Know that if you sell more units, you can lower the price per unit. The revenue is price times the number of units sold. So go ahead and answer the following questions. Find the revenue. What will price will allow you to make at least $60,900 in revenue? And then we'll ask you a few more questions. So pause the video and see what you can do. Go ahead. Assuming you've come back, we have revenue is number of units sold times price, so x times p. So once we rewrite our equation, you can see it's a quadratic. If you want the price that will get you 60,900 in revenue, then you set your revenue to 60,900, which gives you a quadratic equation. Use your quadratic formula. And so now we have x equals, use your quadratic formula, put it in your calculator to get approximate answer. And so we have x equals 1450 or x equals 1050. So both of those number of units, x is the number of units, so both selling 1450 and 1050 units will give you the revenue to 60,900. So what if in addition you were asked how many units must be sold to gain maximum revenue? To get that, we know it's a parabola facing down, so we have to find the vertex. It's halfway between the two x-intercepts, or you can use the formula minus b over 2a for the vertex. So we have x is going to be 1250 units. If you are asked what price to set to gain maximum revenue, put a 1250 into the price function, and that will tell you that you have to set the price at $50 per unit to get that maximum revenue.